Hey guys, we're at my shop today. I want to talk about this radio, the Radiodity QT40, which is the same as the uh, the Anytone Aries 2. Uh, I've had this now for a year. This radio has been here, <laughs> obviously. I've had it set up in my house. On my house, I always have either a half wave or a 5 eighths wave vertical. Uh, I've actually sometimes had a quarter wave too. Uh, but And the house is always on a vertical antenna. Uh, down here, I currently have it hooked up to my uh, VQ3, the three element V quad. This has been a, a fantastic radio. Like I said, I've had it in the house, here, and I've had it in my car. Uh, in the car, the radio itself is a little too big for my car. Uh, the only place in my car to mount the radio is where the stereo used to be. And this radio, because of the heat sink on the back, just like that one, it sticks it out too far out of the dash. So uh, I put it here, and uh, let me bring it in close. I'll bring it in close, and let me show you uh, all the, the great features on this radio. Like, like I said, for a year now, that one has been in operation here. All right, I'm going to bring it in close and show you. All right, let's try and dig in deep on this one. Forgive my chair. You're going to hear that. that oh, now I can't make it do it. You're going to hear that noise throughout the video. The chair is a little squeaky. All right, on this radio, the QT40. Uh, again, same as a uh, an Anytone Aries 2. We have all the normal things, you know, four-pin mic plug, which they this is wired for a, a standard uh, Cobra uh, mic wiring. So a four-pin Cobra, four-pin Uniden, uh, Galaxy. Those mics will all plug right onto this and work. In the menu. Uh, there's you can access the menu two different ways you can access it through the radio itself or you can access it on the computer which we'll get to that later there's a, a nice computer program that goes with this radio um, but in that program or in the radios menu uh, you need to set the mic for either the uh, electric mic or a dynamic mic uh, 500 ohm or 1000 ohm mic it comes from the factory with a 1000 ohm mic. Uh, these, <laughs> I have tried over a dozen different microphones on this radio. One microphone sounded a little bit better than the stock. And I figured it's only a little bit better. And using that power mic, I end up losing the up and down buttons. So I decided to just stick with the stock mic. These work fantastic with these radios. All right, now that we're done with the microphone and we discussed the changing the settings in the menu, which again, I will show you that when we bring up the menu and when we bring up the computer software. We have the volume and the squelch. Uh, I made some changes to my radio. The volume knob, uh, it used to be that uh, one with the flat sides. I switched it to a round knob, uh, just my personal preference. I like the round knobs better. Uh, same thing with the channel knob. I switched mine to a, a round knob. But we have the, the volume and squelch. We have the clarifier and the RF gain. The clarifier I really like on these radios. In the computer program, you can set that clarifier so that it's either only changes the frequency just a little bit all the way or you can set it like I have mine currently set so that when you're on channel when you're on 38 actually let's go down one because there's a very popular channel which is in between channels in between 36 and 37 with this radio turn that clarifier all the way to the left and now you're exactly in between channels you're on 27.370 megahertz and the clarifier is notched in the center this radio is dead on frequency I have talked to many guys on high-end radios and every one of them has told me this radio is right on frequency and it's right at the notch so just it's as I said I love the clarifier on this radio because I can go down half a channel and then I don't have to wonder where it's supposed to be just go to the notch and I also wanted to show while we're talking about the clarifier we're probably gonna go over this again 
because I am constantly getting people on the first video I made of this radio saying, if only it had a frequency counter. Watch that channel display. Currently, we're on 27.3721. But now, I want to show you with the clarifier. In the program, you can have the clarifier set to be... Uh, unlocked or locked so I have it oh I think I may have been actually accidentally keying up the microphone <laughs> I'm broadcasting part of this video I meant to just push the uh, the two buttons for the frequency counter now if we go right center we're on 27.3750 and I'll watch 5.6 Oh, where are we going here? All right, twenty-seven three eight zero zero. And if we go halfway down, it's a little confusing to follow it. Twenty-seven three seven eight two. So if you're talking to somebody that's off frequency, when you tune them in you can tell them where they are it's that's really the only time that I find that part of the frequency counter to be useful because for me it's either on the channel which I actually just press the channel down button first or off the channel <laughs> alright I think I've talked about the clarifier long enough <laughs> Next to it, we have the uh, the mode selector, uh, lower sideband, upper sideband, AM, FM, and PA. And what, uh, the display changes and it says PA when you're on PA. And next to that, we have the uh, band selector uh, on D. Now, this radio, <laughs> it doesn't have to be on D. Uh, CB band is... Uh, set so once you've modified the radio so that it does CB band D is set for the primary uh, 40 channels But this this radio can be reprogrammed again. It's more of what I'm going to show you in the software You can change it so that you can make it so that band a You can reprogram all the frequencies and make band a the CB band and go up from there but I left it at D and I only modified band E. Band E, I reprogrammed all of the frequencies so that it follows because the the way the radio is set up, it's meant it's made to follow the 40 CB channels. So it would skip a few frequencies and it would jump around a few, uh, like the CB does around what channels 22 and 24 and in that area, it, it jumps all over the place. So this one will keep it in order, so that if it's on channel 2, while well, the radio is on channel 42. And if I put it up to channel 12, the radio is on 52. Which when I press, I'll press the two buttons on the microphone, press these two buttons, and it tells you what frequency you're on. And we're on 27.520, uh, 5250, which I just call channel 52. Right, let's go back to here make sure our clarifier is where it's supposed to be all right then we have the microphone gain and the power output now if you're going to be running this with an amplifier that power output will be important to you I currently run it actually let me pause this for a I have it hooked up to that box right there oh we don't want to look too much in those fins we're out in the shop look at the dust that's on there I just cleaned that, oh well, two weeks ago. But I run it with that box. This radio is perfect for that kind of uh, amplifier. That's just a, uh, a little two pill. It's a Motorola 455 is in that one. Uh, it's a, maybe a 200 watt amp. Peaks maybe 225, you might get it out of it. But what I see on the meter here is usually around 200. But this radio is great for an amp like that. 
I can run the output power at full blast. That amp will take it, but I don't really feel the need. It doesn't really make it put out much more power. Uh, we're only talking like 5 watts, maybe, by putting it all the way up. So I usually crank it down for sideband use. See, I have my little uh, cheat sheet here. So let me lower you for a second. I have my little cheat sheet. Uh, the QT40 plus the 225 amp. On AM, I have the power level set at 15. On sideband, at 35. And on FM, 5. We don't want to blow up another box here. We already had that happen a couple of months ago. Let me get that camera back where it should be. It keeps wanting to drop back down as soon as I let it go. <laughs> it's being stubborn. So that having that adjustment there is fantastic. It makes it so easy. And nothing had to be changed on the radio. The radio's original power settings and its output power work fantastic with a little two-pill amp. Let me show you. We have it turned all the way up. Let's go to a channel where hopefully there isn't any activity. Because dummy loads are nice, but I like to see real world stuff. Because you can't transmit on a dummy load. I don't care what you, that dummy load tells you. So we're going to be on an antenna. We're on. Oh yeah, we're going to need to be on. We're on sideband, and I have the power all the way up. Let's give a, uh, a little... Could you see that? I can't see it from back there. <laughs> I'm getting old. It looks like just about what Radiodity says the radio will do. I was seeing just about 40 watts. We're on the 200 watt scale, so we're on the bottom set of slashes. And it was going to the, the fourth one there. So we were we were around 400, uh, 400 yeah, we, don't we wish 400, <laughs> 40 watts. <laughs> now let's go to, we'll go to AM, I think it's below 20 watts on AM. Yeah, we're seeing a dead key, yeah, oh, maybe 11 watts. And a swing, well, the swing, we need to go on the next scale up. Well, it's hard to get that whistle right onto that little dot right there, because that's where the actual element is. <laughs> but it looks like on AM it was swinging to almost 40 watts. Let's see what FM does. Remember, we still have the power all the way up. And on FM, looks like about 35 watts on FM. Now, if we turn that power all the way down, we can actually drop that scale down now. And on FM, we have just under one watt with it all the way down. And I'll show you on level five, where I put it when using it with the amplifier, it's about three and a half watts. And then I'll show you AM. And let's go. With that amp, I set the radio, the power level, to level 15. We're on the low setting on that. And we have about a four watt dead key with no swing. We got no swing. Well, how about if we pump that all the way up? There we go, there is our swing. What are we seeing? With a power level at 15 where I run it with the amplifier. Looks like we're seeing a maximum of about a 15 watt swing on AM with a 4 watt dead key. That's not bad for a factory radio. And then again, where I run it 
For sideband, I put the power level on the radio at 35. Let's just wait for that to go back. Oh, we're on the wrong scale. It looks like about 30 watts peak to go into the amplifier on sideband. Which again, it's why I love this radio. It's perfect for the small amplifiers. Everything is easy to use on it. And we haven't even covered half of what this thing can do yet. We have the normal things over here. The noise blanker and automatic noise limiter. The noise reduction circuit. Oh, oh, I absolutely love I have this radio and I have the, um, the Radio Oddity QT60 that both have that noise reduction circuit. I love that, that feature. And it's very easy to operate. You can shut it off right there with the switch. You can turn it on. Or you can set it to the, uh, the settings. Uh, right now, you've got the double R. We got receive, and I currently leave it on number one setting. Uh, anything higher than number number two is not bad. It doesn't affect most people, uh, but any higher than level two, uh, it'll make a lot of people sound like they're talking through uh, water. Their 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 heads under water and they're talking to you. So I don't go any higher than two on it. And again, we can either turn the knob. First, turn it on before key in the mic. <laughs> and then we have TR on the screen. Uh, that's for the transmit noise filter. I have it off. I, I don't really need it. I'm not driving down the road. I'm in my shop. Uh, I suppose if I had things running in the shop, maybe. Right now, I only have a window air conditioner, and I doubt very much you can hear it. I'm quiet for a second just so that I can see if I can hear it later on playback. <laughs> So anyway, I leave the transmit reduction off, and the receive I leave on level one. And we just go back to on, and we're out of the, the setting part of it. Then we have the 10K switch, so we can jump a channel, which, I mean, it's, it's helpful if you go down to... Oh, actually, let's change this. We'll go to one that I know. Uh, if we press the two buttons on the mic, we can see we're on 27.1850. We go up a channel, and we're on 27.20. What happened to 19? Well, let's go back here. Go plus 10K, and look at that. We got that channel that was hiding in between channel 19 and 20. So it's a it's a, a cool feature. I mean, but again, like you, like I said earlier, you can reprogram this, so it's cool. So you can leave it as is, or you can reprogram the radio so that if you wanted that frequency in, you could have it. And then we have the echo. The echo is nice on this radio. They, I can't remember if I talked about this or not. I may not have talked about it, but let's go anyway. The echo, you can shut it off, turn it on, or go to set. And we have the echo length. And let's see, you key the microphone, and it tells you where you're set. And again, these are one of those things you don't really need to worry about bothering anybody, because look at the power meter. We're not putting out any power when I'm in the, the set modes. So we can change the, the echo length. I currently have mine on uh, level 8. This actually goes to level 32. On level 8, on both, see now, if we turn that, don't press the buttons on the mic, turn the channel knob, we have the echo time, which I also have on level 8. And it's the same thing, that goes up to level 32. Having them on uh, uh, setting 08, gives the output of the radio a little more full sound it's uh it's bigger it but it's not annoying and i have never never had anybody tell me to shut the echo off or even question why i'm running echo or if i'm running echo so on level eight it's not noticeable as echo but it does make the sound bigger so i leave it on 
Over here we have the band switch because uh, again this radio covers a lot of frequencies. So I'm on the low setting which on band D gives me the regular C, B channels. But I have 40 other channels on C, A, B, E, F and it's the same thing. Over here we have more because now if we check, press those two buttons on the microphone again we'll see we're on 29 megahertz now because we're up in the high area and then if we turn it down we have <laughs> the weather frequencies in with the weather frequencies there is also uh, well even the weather frequencies you can reprogram that so I think there's 20 channels which we'll see it when I get to the computer software I'm telling this radio there is just so much to this radio <laughs> they uh, Channels can be reprogrammed. You can put in 10 meter, uh, not 10 meter, uh, 2 meter ham uh, frequencies in this. You can have the weather channels. You can, there's a, a bunch of frequencies in the area that this will cover. Uh, in the owner's manual, it says what, what area it covers. Uh, I currently have this set. Uh, my buddy was over here the other day and we were playing with the radio and I put in a, a, a repeater, which Oh, we just missed the activity. <laughs> it was something. He said it was a repeater in, in in our area that has a lot of activity. I had the volume down. And I noticed that the meter was all the way up. And just as I reached the knob, the meter dropped. <laughs> Whatever the activity was, it went away. But we programmed in that repeater on this radio. I'll show you what the... Some kind of municipal services. I'm surprised at how well I was picking it up because that's out of uh, Sumter, which is uh, center of Sumter is 20 miles away from me. But we also have weather channels programmed in. I think the second one, yeah, second one's a good one for my area. East winds five to ten miles an hour. Wednesday, mostly sunny. Like I said, these can all be reprogrammed and you can put in whatever you want. It's just about that time to get to the computer software because I think we've pretty much covered everything about the radio, looking at the radio. Actually, you know what? We haven't covered everything on the face of the radio. For this, we need to shut it off. And the stock microphone, press and hold the up button on the microphone and turn the radio on and you notice that uh, we got a BP on the screen over there that's for the uh, the beep <laughs> which oh I don't like the beep I really don't like the beep I am so glad thank you so much Radio Oddity for making it possible to remove that beep All right, but if we scroll through you can again either use the rotary uh, switch here or the up and down buttons on the microphone and it moves through the Roger beep we're gonna get into that Roger beep more later but you can turn it on and off in here uh, once you reach where you oh pardon me I'm getting a little bit of indigestion here my breakfast uh, donuts are coming back up at me <laughs> if we keep them like we can see that I have the Roger beep off but you can scroll through and pick any one of the Roger beeps that you have now there's more than five available I believe but I only have five programmed <laughs> now you notice I said programmed we'll get into that later the Roger beep can be modified on this radio alright now let's press that up button again we'll just go through and just see that there's there's a lot more things in the menu you can do uh, this is one of the things I really want to talk about though the NPC feature now <laughs> All the shops are going to tell you to leave this feature off. Don't turn it on. You're going to have a square waveform. It's going to sound like shit on the air. Ignore them. If you talk only on AM, I 100% agree with them. Do not turn it on if you're an AM talker. But if you talk on sideband, absolutely, freaking lootly turn it on. This radio on sideband with it in the off position whistling into the mic the most power I could get out of the radio was about 25 watts on sideband when I turned the feature on 
it came to life. Now we're hitting 40 watts like it should. And now it's peaking that 40 on just my speaking voice. So I leave that feature on. I've also done uh, extensive radio checks with uh, locals. Uh, locals that will give me an honest evaluation and tell me what it sounds like on the air. And I've done it with it on and off. On sideband, have it on. AM, shut it off. Uh, AM or FM, just shut it off. Because AM or FM, you're going to mess up the way you sound. You're going to sound like garbage. But on sideband, it helps immensely. All right. We have other things. There's, like I said, there's a bunch of things that you can do within this menu. I pretty much stay out of this menu. I'm going to show you why. <laughs> uh, what's the, what was the NT? Oh, the NT. Oh, that's actually one I should show you too, though. That's the, uh, for the microphone. Uh, so if you key it, you can see it. I have it on the, the electric microphone. Uh, but turn the knob and we have dynamic. So that one's actually, uh, yeah, that one's worthwhile for me to show you. That's something a lot of us need to know. And we have the, the setting for the, uh, the clarifier. We have it currently set to, when I turn that clarifier, it changes both receive and transmit. Again, you can shut the clarifier right off so it does nothing, and it's just locked on frequency for both uh, receive and transmit. Or you can set it so it changes just receive, or you can change it so it's receive and transmit. Now I leave mine on receive and transmit because of like I showed you where I spin that clarifier to get in between channels. So I leave it on so that it, it changes both for me. It's also the reason why if I'm talking to somebody that's off frequency, I am not going to tune them in. Because if I tune them in, I'm going to put myself off frequency. So... Uh, if you see one of my skip videos and somebody I'm talking to is off frequency, I didn't adjust because I don't want to be off frequency. Right, let me just go through real quick. Oh, that's the SWR feature so that you can, I have it off, but you can have that on and whenever you key up the mic, it will display your SWR right there on the screen. <laughs> All right, I'm no dummy, but I have accidentally keyed the mic three times. Count it, three times. When that screen says RT, if you don't want to lose all of the settings that you changed in, the, in this menu or on the computer, do not key that microphone. If you key that microphone while that is on RT, it resets it back to factory. <laughs> I have remapped the channels for band E three times now because I accidentally erased it and then had to go in and change every one of the the 40 channels to be where I wanted them. Don't key it up if it says RT, unless you made a mistake you want to fix. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Let's get out of there, and then we're right back at the beginning. All right, now we are done. Oh, and to get out of the menu, you shut the radio off, turn it back on. Notice it flashed that BP at us for a second, but now we're back to the radio. Oh, we're still on the weather band. And we're on channel 19 on AM now. Oh, and actually we're on 19 on lower sideband. All right, let me bring you over and I'm going to bring up the computer software and I'll show you what the what's in that computer software. Okay, well you got to buy the data cable separate, but the, it's offered on the website. And just a little uh, note, if you're running a computer with Windows 7 like I am, uh, Windows 7 will not automatically set up this cable and on Radio Oddity's website uh, the last time I looked they did not have a driver on the website for, for the cable under the QT40 radio. If you go on their website and you go to drivers for the uh, QT60 on, on the QT60, they had this the same cable. The radio, both radios use the same cable. So you can grab the driver from the QT60 folder and use that driver to activate this cable so it'll work with Windows 7. And then once you just plug it in, hold on, let me get to my USB port here. 
All right. Yeah, my computer decided, okay, we got something new. Let's see if we can make this bigger. Oh, yeah. All right. Actually, maybe I ought to make it smaller, huh? <laughs> we could actually see all of it like this. Okay, let's see. We have my mouse pointer, which is responding really slow for some reason. We're going to put that on the CB. Because, again, we already modified this radio. And I showed you how to do that in the first video I made of this radio. Uh, opening it up and allowing it to get this section here. So once you have it modified and we have this, then we can go in and let's see. We want low E, low band, because remember the switch that was on the front of the radio, uh, where it was the band switch for a high, low, and weather band. If you put it on the L on the low setting, and uh, oh, let's see, yes, on low and on band E. We get the the area that's just above the CB band. So as you can see on mine, I have it all reprogrammed and in order. Let's see, what else do we have? That's our channel information. We have the weather, and this is what I was talking about. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? We're not on my radio yet. Let me go to read from radio. I was gonna say that's not reprogrammed yet. I didn't notice either if that band E. I just wanted to show you the face of the radio. Can you see that? It says PC <laughs> while the computer is reading from the radio. It'll take a second, and then it'll display uh, all the the current settings that I have on that radio. So for that, what we did was we go up to program, and in pro, I can't, I can't open it up right now because it's reading from the radio. Just about done. All right. Get rid of that. And we go to program, you can see it says read from radio and then write to radio. So if we make any changes within the program and we want to save them to the radio, you have to write it to the radio. If you don't write it to the radio, all the changes you made will not be saved. So just remember to do that. And like I said, and then we have the, the weather channels. Now we can see, let's go to that channel 18 is the one that I just added in there the other day. But you see, it covers a pretty big area. I don't know what the frequencies are. I don't remember what they are that it covers. But on here, we have from 154 all the way up to 162. And <laughs> there's a lot of it that can be changed. Options and features. In here, we have a lot of stuff. Uh, we have the monitor level for the talkback. Uh, squelch level for the weather band. Uh, timeout timer. No, oh, the the busy. I'm not sure what the busy is for. It's on or off, I think. You know, on or off. I don't know what that busy is for. The high cut. I have it on to cut out a lot more of the hiss. I I hate the hiss. The static level. I just don't like the static. <laughs> Which again is why I like the noise reduction circuit on this radio. All right. Under that, we have the Roger beep. And again, we can turn it on or off and pick which one we want to use. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Roger Beep is next. Uh, we can set it so that it has battery voltage protection. If it goes below 9, uh, the radio um, probably will j either just shut off or not, not transmit. And above 17, I'm pretty sure it would shut off. We have the Vox, so it has a hands-free setting. And again, in here, we can change the microphone type from the uh, the electric to the dynamic. And we have the noise reduction. And like I showed you on the radio, look, I'm set at number one, and transmit is off. Okay, over here, we have, if you turn the squelch knob on the face of the radio, the channel display, it'll give you, again, that uh, 1 through 45 
uh, setting on the display so you can see what how where you have the squelch set at on the display uh, volume level is the same thing I have the volume on I just like to see what volume I'm at uh, on those nights where the static is really low <laughs> I don't want to accidentally have that radio up really loud and then have one of the loud locals come on and blast me off my chair <laughs> so I have it so it shows me the volume level so that I can know the level not just by the sound uh, microphone level I don't really care about that because I leave it all the way up I'm running the stock mic Mike uh, Mike gain is all the way up uh, extension band uh, that one I'm not sure what that is I don't remember what that is I have it on but I don't remember what it is at the moment uh, the auto squelch I have off I don't like the auto squelch I don't use squelch um, we have what I showed you in the other menu to have the channel display uh, display your SWR when you key up you'd put a checkbox next to that uh, I have it set so that that knob shows me the power level though because like I showed you my little cheat sheet there 5 15 and 35 are my power levels uh, we can have the SWR protect on and I currently have it off for some reason but I had it set this is adjustable I had mine set so that if it spiked to 2.9 uh, the radio would stop uh, stop transmitting and we can change the echo level and again it shows the two levels I already showed you both set at 8 and the, the uh, clarifier adjustment and here's the the 5k step that I was talking about with uh, getting in between channels so you can set that clarifier so it's 500 Hertz or 5 kilohertz uh, the 500 Hertz you'd have to turn it a lot to do any difference the 5 kilohertz, like I said, half a turn of the clarifier, you're half a channel. Uh, the key beep, uh, we have that off. That's a, that annoying beep when you turn the radio on and it goes beep. <laughs> I dislike it a lot. <laughs> weather alert, I have it off. I don't want the thing all of a sudden blasting the weather reports at me. Uh, we also have a, a dimmer level, so how bright the, uh, the, the lights are on the front of the radio. And the transmit NPC. I am a sideband user, so I have it on. I don't talk on AM. So again, all the shops that tell you to leave it off, if you're a sideband user and you don't use AM or FM, turn it on. If you're using AM and FM, absolutely leave it off. Oh, and we have the scan mode. And I have it set for squelch. What are the other choices on that? Squelch, or what is that? T1? I can't really see it. <laughs> I gotta put my glasses on in order to see the computer screen. And I still can't see it. TI? T1? I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. We'll just leave it on Squelch. Now we can go to the Roger Beep. And the Roger Beep is really cool as we see you can have a 14 tone Roger beep and we have eight programmable beeps we can put in here I put in just a simple beep that's it that's all the beep is uh, but you can go crazy with it all right as you see this you, you can change you can change all of it you can change how long it runs the frequency of it and oh again I've I've talked about this Roger beep in the past and I really hate to do it again but I'm going to anyway <laughs> you can set 14 tones on any one of these Roger beeps set your radio so that it will play those 14 tones and then you can come over here and you can tell it to play it 10 times in a row so it will play those 14 tones 10 times. This one, I'm not sure what this one is. Inter times. Ooh. I might have to try that, though. Oh, it's, it's got to be the space in between when it plays it. All right, it's currently set to zero, so it will play the 14 tones and immediately start the 14 over or you can adjust it a hey. so you could actually set it so that you have a 
22,550 millisecond gap in between each time it plays that 14 tone Roger Beep. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we have pretty much covered uh, everything that we need to see in this. Uh, I have covered over how to set up this software in the first video, but I will mention again the communication port. Uh, the default on this one for me was COM1. I had to come in here and switch it to COM3 in order to make it, the computer communicate with the radio. So other than that, I didn't really need to change anything else. I didn't need any other menu items up here. Yeah, see, that just opens up the, the different options that we already have right below it. And again, then we have the, if I wanted, if I made any changes to this today and I wanted to save it, I would then right now click right to radio and it would reprogram the radio to run with all the, the new setup. What's optional features? Oh, it just brings us back to that. <laughs> Alright guys, I guess that's going to do it for the QT40. As you can see, we still have it connected to the computer. So it was still saying PC. I'm going to turn it back on and we're back to normal. Fantastic radio. The last time I looked on Radio Oddity's website, they had it for $199 with free shipping. Uh, don't quote me on that price because I don't know if that uh, was a special going on or not. But it was a $200 radio. For $200, you can't beat this radio. There is nothing better on the market sideband wise that's brand new for less than 200. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to badmouth other radios. I just don't want to do that. But this, I'll just say for $200, you can't beat the QT40 or the Anytone Aries 2. All right, guys. I hope to hear you guys on the air. And uh, I'll catch you next time. 73s.